Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here, and this lesson is interpret rate of change and slope. So slope is rate of change, so as long as it's aligned. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. All right, so here's our question. How can we relate uh, rate of change and slope in linear relationships? Okay, so rate of change, you guys, is a fraction typically, and it's your change in your Y values over your change in your X values. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, usually we have some ordered pairs that we can do this. So the table here shows the year and the cost of sending a one ounce letter in cents. Okay, so here's the years after year 2000. So this would be 2003 because it's three years after 2000. Okay, this would be 2004. Here's 2006, 2008, 2013. And then here's uh, the cost in cents, uh, 37 cents, okay, it cost in 2003, and then 2004 was 37 cents, and then it jumped up to 39 cents, and so on. So um, uh, anyway, so, so uh, let's find the rate of change. So the change in postage, so that would be this number right here, the cost right here, over the change in year for each time period using this table. All right, let me slide that up right there. Okay, so from uh, 2003 to 2004, okay, so the change in postage is going to be 37 minus 37. Actually, it goes this way, 37 minus this 37 over 4 minus 3 right there. Okay, so we get uh, 0 over 1 and 0 over any number uh, equals zero. Okay, so zero over any number equals zero. If you have a number that's over zero, that's undefined. And how I tell my kids is this, you guys, I say, pretend like this is your coffee table and this is a ball right here. This ball won't hold up this number right here. It'll make the table fall over because it's a ball. It doesn't have legs on it. So if zero's on the bottom, uh, it's undefined. That's how I, I try to tell my kids how to remember that one. All right, so from 2004 to 2006, okay, so 39 minus 37 over 6 minus 4, okay? And so uh, we get uh, 2 over 2, which is 1, 1 cent per year, okay? So that's uh, the average on that. From 2006 to 2008, it's going to be, okay, remember we're doing the change in postage on top. So 42 minus 39 over 8 minus 6, okay? So we get um, uh, 42 minus 39 is 3. And so 3 over 2 is 1.5. So 1 and a half cents per year. That was the change in postage, okay? And then finally, from 2008 to 2013, we get... Um, we get uh, uh, 80 cents. Okay, I'm sorry, 0. 0.8 cents. Sorry, 80 cents. No, it's 0. 0.8 cents. It's not even one penny right there. So 0. 0.8 cents per year, okay, over this five-year span right there. Okay, so let's answer some questions here. So here's a, a plot of the points represented in the table. By connecting the points with line segments, we make what's called a statistical line graph, okay? So here's 2003. So 2003. Here's 2004, here's 2006, 2008, here's 2013. Here's the postage, 37 cents, 37 cents, then it jumped to 39, then 42 cents, and 46 cents. Okay, so we just connected these ordered pairs in line segments. So here's the years after 2000. Okay, so three years after 2000 is right here. And then over here, the cost. They have like a little springboard right here. This little springboard is so we can spring up to the first number. So, so I mean, if we made these tick marks and started at zero, well, it wouldn't start till way up, you know, up above my computer right there. So this little springboard springs us up to 30, and then we can start going 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, okay? So that way we can plot all these points right here, okay? All right. So find the rate of change for each time period using the graph. Okay, so, all right, so let's just use, use this graph right here. So label the vertical increase, which is the rise, and the horizontal increase, which is the run between um, uh, this point right here, 437, and 6, 6,39 right there. All right, then we're going to find uh, the rate of change, which is rise over run. Okay, so the rise is your vertical lift. So it went up to and it went over to. Now the reason why this up is not the same as this over is because here the scales are counted by twos right here and here the scales are counted by ones. 
Okay, so this one should be, you know, this two is going to be twice as long as this two right there because this one's going up by twos and this one's going up by ones right there. Anyway, so the rise is two, the run is two, so two over two is one. Okay, so we get one cent per year, okay? It's because it says find the rate of change. It's one cent uh, for each time period using the graph. So one cent per year, rise over run, okay? Same thing, except we're going from 639, which is this point right here, to 842, rise over run, okay? So the rise right here is up three over two. So three over two is that uh, 1.5. And then, you know, we calculate it using the slope formula, but if you have a picture, you can just do rise over run. So how much did it go up is uh, the top number, and how much did it go over is your bottom number. So 1.5 cents per year in that time period right there. Okay, and then finally, let's do it from uh, 842 to 1346. So Rise is 4, run is 5, so 4 over 5, which is um, 0.8 cents per year, okay? Piece of cake. So between which two years is the rate of change um, the greatest, okay? Well, I think the greatest was that 1.5, so the, it went from year 2006 to 2008 at the greatest uh, rate of change, which is 1.5 uh, cents per year, okay? Uh, and the least was uh, from 2003 to 2004. Nothing happened there. It, it stayed the same. So compare the line segments between 2006 and 2008 with the line segment between 2008 and 2013, which is steeper. Okay, which represents a greater rate. Okay, so from 2006 to 2008, it's from here to here. It went up 3 over 2, which was 1.5. And then here it went up 4 over 5, which was 0.8. Okay, so the steeper line was from here to here. So the line segment between 2006 and 2008 is steeper, and it represents the greater rate of change. Okay? So how do you think that the steepness of a line segment between two points is related to the rate of change it represents? Well, uh, the greater the rate of change, the steeper the line segment between two points. All right. So determine the, uh, determining the slope of a line is we can do what's called the slope formula. So slope is rise over run, and then if you know your, uh, your, your coordinates, then you do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, okay? So determine the slope of each line, okay? So here we have two points right here. It doesn't matter which one you want to pick. I think I picked this one to be x1, y1, and then this one to be x2, y2. So I'm going to use this slope formula right here, okay? So slope formula is going to be this y minus this y over this x minus this x right here. That's what this says over here. 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 2. 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 2. Just put your y's on top, okay? 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is, is 1. So the slope of this line is 3. 3 over 1, which is just 3. Okay, so it goes up 3 over 1. Okay, this one. Okay, it doesn't matter which points you pick, you guys. You can make this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2, or you can make this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I chose this one to be... Um, this one to be my x1, y1, and this was my x2, y2. So this y minus this y, 3 minus 0, over this x minus this x. So you just got to stay in the same order. This one was the first number, then this one's got to be the first number on the bottom right there, okay? So 3 minus 0 is 0. I'm sorry, 3. And then uh, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, so we get negative 1. Check it out. I did it the other way. You still get negative 1. doesn't matter uh, if you did... Uh, this y minus this y, just as long as you do this x minus this x. 1 minus a minus 2 is 1 plus 2. Okay, you still get the slope of negative 1, okay? All right, so what is the slope of a horizontal line? Well, that's 0 when the slope of a horizontal line. How about a vertical line? That's when you get the undefined slope. That's when you get 0 in the denominator. If you have a graph of a line, how, do, how can we determine whether the slope is positive, negative, 0, or undefined using points on a line? All right, well, I'm sorry, without using points on a line. Well, if it's going up like this, it's a positive slope. So if it's rising from left to right, it's positive. If it's falling from left to right, it's a negative slope. It's a horizontal slope right here, and so the slope is zero. And when it's a vertical one, it's an undefined slope, okay? So positive when it goes up that way, 
negative when it goes that way, zero when it's horizontal, and undefined when it's vertical right there. All right, so find the slope of the line passing through these given points. Okay, so they say this is the line, so you can pick any two pairs of points you want. I picked those first two, so x1, y1, uh, x2, y2. So I did um, uh, this y minus this y over this x minus this x. Okay, 5 minus 5 is 0 over 1, so you get 0. Remember, if 0 is on top, it's 0. If 0 is on bottom, it's undefined. All right, so find and interpret the slope for each real-world situation. Okay, so this graph shows the relationship between a person's age and and his or her estimated uh, maximum heart rate right there. So let's find the slope. Okay, so y2 minus y1. So this y minus this y over this x minus this x, we get 30 over negative 30, which equals negative 1. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so this is our estimated heart rate. Right here is the age in years, and right here is um, the maximum heart rate. So it looks like as uh, they get older, the heart rate uh, decreases right there. So that negative 1 means that with the slope being negative 1, for every year a person's age increases, his or her maximum heart rate decreases by one beat per minute. Okay, this is beats per minute right here. So as we go in this direction, one unit, the line goes down in this direction, which is beats per minute in one unit. Okay, all right, how about this? The height of a plant y in centimeters after x days is a linear relationship. So they give us these two points uh, they are on the line right there. So let's use slope formula and we get one. Okay, now x is uh, the days and y is um, the growth uh, in height. So what the 1 means is um, uh, with the slope of 1, the plant's height increases by 1 centimeter every 1 days or every each day. All right, if you're in my class, I'm going to assign you that homework assignment right there. And sorry for the long assignment, you guys. There's a long lesson. Take care.